Fantastic finish by our guys today. Um, showed a lot of heart and toughness and, and uh, grit in this game. I thought we were um, battling a little bit of mental and physical fatigue at times. Um, Miami's a, a very strong athletic team that, that does a lot of things really well. And um, certainly the score isn't indicative of of the, of the way that the game was played. It was nip and tuck and, uh, you know, we needed all 12 threes. I thought we shot it great. And uh, Dante was fantastic, I thought, being somewhat tired after a very physical game at State. But to make, make those shots was huge. And then obviously Mark Donnell's threes in the second half were a big lift and um, found a way to get a few stops, make some free throws down the stretch to seal it. Questions? It's just kind of another look, Brad, as far as, far as this team's maturity and, like you just mentioned, battling through the fatigue on a short break and overcoming the disappointment of that tough loss the other night. Yeah, we have uh, we have an experienced group, so I think that helps. Um, you know, doesn't help you be any less tired, but it, it does help you understand the importance of things. And uh, you know, I was a little more animated tonight than I've been um, with them, and and got after them a few times because I did think we had some mental mistakes that we haven't made as much this year, and we had several of them today. And I think some of it maybe was just a little bit of fatigue. And uh, the other thing, I wanted them to see their coach, you know, with energy and passion and, and things today. And, uh, you know, if I'm expecting that of them, they need to look over. They don't need to see me sitting down and, and just being calm. They need, they need to know that this is like we're all fighting and uh, our coaches are tired. We've been watching film and trying to get prepared and not sleeping much and, and working. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just proud of the way our guys continued to battle. And uh, we made, you know, some big plays again at the end of the game offensively. Um, you know, and luckily they didn't shoot it quite as well today, and we got got just enough stops to to pull away at the end and made some free throws to win it. Coach, uh, packed house today, uh, biggest crowd you've had in quite some time. Uh, how much were you guys able to feed off that energy today? Yeah, great crowd. Uh, just you know, just great to see that many students at the game. Um, you know, we've had some decent student turnouts, but you know, and the community's been great. The community's been out a lot this year, really supporting this team, and it's just fun for our players to to play in front of their classmates. Uh, I think it means a little more because they're here early. Uh, you know, guys know it. You know, you come to the arena and there's a line out the door and around the building, and and that gives our guys juice. There's no doubt about it. I, it had an impact on the win for sure. Brad, when you talk about battling, um, when the other team is having the success they were having on the offensive glass, how much harder is that emotionally? It's hard when you defend them, get them to miss, and then you got to do it again or they just put it back in. It's like the first, you know, we talk about it a lot, you know, let's not guard them for 25 seconds, get them to take a bad shot. And then they out tough us or out physical us for the, for the ball. And we got to either do it again or they're laying it in. It doesn't, doesn't make much sense. Now we made a couple tactical errors where I thought Eli was trying to come over and block too many shots. Kept trying to tell him that you need to stay home. Like he, he left his position at least twice, maybe three times. And they scored every time because now Huell's going to the rim and even if, when they missed a shot it's it's a layup and so it's just that's not good basketball and so being smart about when to go attack a driver when to stay home um that's something we got to continue to coach eli on Brad mark said that uh, that he hits those kind of threes in practice are you comfortable yeah he's out there by himself yeah the yeah absolutely he's uh you know that's one of his best attributes is his ability to play away from the basket and make plays and you know, Mark Donnell's been great. Um, you know, he's a fifth-year guy who comes from a winning program, and, you know, he's playing 15 minutes for us, meaningful minutes. Uh, you know, but Eli's our starter and the guy that plays more minutes, and Mark just comes to practice every day and does what you need him to do. Uh, unbelievable teammate. Guys love him. He's extremely quiet. He just kind of goes about his business. Um, but he does it almost like a professional. You know, he's a professional in the way he handles himself and carries himself and practices. And uh, because of that, our guys love him. So when he makes a shot, you see our whole bench jump up because they love him. And uh, they appreciate the sacrifice he's making and the kind of young man he is. And, uh, you know, it's just been a lot of fun to have him around. Um, just a funny story. Just So he came from Michigan. My, my former player and an assistant coach at Michigan at the time, Billy Donlin, uh, obviously was trying to help me a little bit in the recruitment. And he told me, you know, when Mark committed and was coming, he goes, now he plays better when you get when you get mad at him. He goes, he really is very even keel. He almost never changes expression ever. And there's a lot of truth to that. 
And so the play before, he made a bad defensive play. And so being as I was very animated today, I let him have it pretty good. <laughs> Ironically, he goes in and makes the next two threes. So he and I have talked about that. And I'm figuring out what to be mad at him for before we go to Chapel Hill. So I'll find something here. Managing the good things that are going on in the national ranking, social media, hearing all the good things about the team. How do you Don't pay any much attention to it. Um, to be honest with you. It's, you know, again, I'm happy for our players. Um, it, it helps in a lot of ways, but it doesn't help once they throw the ball up. At, it doesn't help one second. Nobody cares. You know, it doesn't matter to us that Miami was ranked, NC State wasn't. You know, we know and anybody in this league, there's great players. There's a lot of pros on every team. And if you don't play well, you're not going to win. And I, I always say this, you can play well and lose. And you, you can't let that beat you up. You got to just try to keep fighting as long as you can. And obviously it's rewarding when your guys make plays and, and you can build some momentum with some wins. And certainly that's that's happened. But, you know, for our team to battle the way we did at NC State when we were really down on our back, and it wasn't just the last minute 30. Like we were we were we were losing in rounds too. And I tell our guys at halftime, it feels like we're getting knocked into the corner every 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 time I look up, but then you look up and we always fight back to the middle of the ring. We just, you know, we're down a basket. And I thought we did that throughout the game. I thought we did it throughout the second half. And then with a minute and a half to go, we probably had the standing eight count, but we came back and, you know, we almost put it to overtime. And so I'm as proud of that about this team as, as anything. That's hard to do. And it's, it's hard to keep doing it. You know, we're not so talented that we can just go out there and play just okay and beat these teams. We're, we have to play well and we have to give great energy and effort. We have to be prepared and focused and, it helps having older players because uh, that's what enables us to do it more often. What about the accomplishments you've had at home? Like, what attributes can you take on the road? Is there anything that transfers with the fact that playing on the road is so different in this league versus playing at home? No, I mean you just your guys got to be in those environments, and you got to you got you need to embrace it as a player, and uh, you know you can't be worried about what's going on outside the lines and, and, you know, they're going to call you names when you're in warmups and when you're sitting on the bench and it happened at Ohio state and it, you know, in Florida, it wasn't, it was neutral, but it really wasn't neutral. And, you know, we've done fine and it was hostile in, at NC state. They were, their fans were into it. It was a big game. Um, and we played reasonably well. Um, you know, we turned the ball over, which was bad, but in other aspects of the game, we rebounded, we guarded them decent, made some mistakes in scouting on your seven, but, our guys have competed. We fought. We've battled. Uh, you just got to keep doing it. That's that's what you got to do. You got to embrace that and want to do it every time out. Coach, uh, 16 of 17 <clears throat> free throw line today, and ironically, you missed a couple in NC State. But how much has that factored into? It helps. Start? There's no question in close games that when you make shots, make free throws, to keep the other team at bay. Um, you know, we obviously have done that in several games. Um, you know, it's a valuable part of the game, and it's. I think it's a lot more difficult than people realize. Like, we can all think about the one Gabe DeVoe missed. Folks, the two that he made, I mean, I, I don't know if I wanted to be up there. I mean, it was, there's about 17,000 people going crazy and he has to make three. Like, there ain't many people in the United States making three. I mean, it was, to make the first two took a lot of guts. And then obviously they called the timeout and he missed one. I mean, that's that's hard. Uh, so he, he he did a heck of a job on that in that situation. Probably first play of the game going up for him on purpose as a result of It was. It was. Probably Get him time going. for one more. How do you combat the fatigue factor over the next 48 hours? Got another yeah, it's hard. Uh, you know, it's funny. Somebody on TV asked me what we do, make 12 threes. I said we didn't shoot yesterday. Um, you know, it's funny. We didn't – you know, I made a decision. We weren't going to – we didn't do anything. We, we watched 30 minutes of NC State clips to – to teach from because there's a lot of things that we could use in this game from that teaching. We ate a sandwich together. We went back in and watched 30 minutes of Miami clips. Then we walked through some Miami things, but we didn't shoot one free throw. We didn't shoot one shot. We didn't do anything. We got them off their feet away from basketball and had them energized this morning. I thought to, uh, you know, that was the most important thing was to try to have the energy necessary to compete against uh, a very good Miami team. And it'll be the same against, uh, against North Carolina. Brad Mar Marquise didn't particularly have a great shooting game most of the night, but the last three minutes, you know, he's there when you need him. His ability to block out what happened before. Yeah, you know, it's funny. That's just, that's who he is. 
good or bad sometimes. Yeah. But like me yelling at him, him missing a couple plays, making a bad turnover, rarely bothers him. <laughs> rarely bothers him. He's a pretty even keel guy, and uh, he's got very, you know, he's got strong conviction about him, and that's why he's a good player. Is he? He believes in himself. Even if he's made a couple bad plays, he doesn't think he's going to make a bad play. He thinks he's going to make the, the next right play, and he beats himself up when he does. Um, but he was obviously he was he struggled for most of the night. Some of it, Miami did some good things, and he missed a couple shots. But uh, obviously, at the end, he was huge.